We've been discussing differential eigenproblems in the context of ordinary differential equations thus far. And before we get to partial differential equations, I'd like to take a look at an issue that we've left unaddressed. And that is, what's the requirement for a differential operator to have mutually orthogonal eigenfunctions? We've been assuming that that's the case in the examples that we've done so far. But how do we know that? How can we determine that? So we want to further build on this analogy to the algebraic eigenproblem and see what is the requirement for the eigenfunctions to be mutually orthogonal. Now remember in the case of a matrix, the eigenvectors are mutually orthogonal to one another if the matrix itself is real and symmetric and has distinct eigenvalues. So that was a requirement for the eigenvectors to be mutually orthogonal. So what is the analogous requirement for a differential operator to have mutually orthogonal eigenfunctions? Well, let's start by returning to the matrix case. And I'm going to show you something interesting that's going to help us define the, what's called the adjoint of a differential operator. So let's say we have an n by n, so a square matrix A, and two arbitrary n by 1 vectors, u and v. So the inner product of two vectors, in this case v and u, is just v transpose times u, or equivalently u transpose times v. So similarly, we could write the inner product of v with a times u, which would then be the transpose of v times a times u. Now let's consider this right-hand side. So remember that the transpose of the product of two matrices is the product of the transposes, but in reverse order. So given that, we could rewrite v transpose times a times u as the transpose of a transpose times v times u. So you can see what we've done here is by writing this as the transpose, we reverse the order of the v transpose and the a. So now we have the transpose of a transpose times v all times u. So therefore, we can express the inner product of v with a times u as the inner product of u with a transpose times v. Now, in effect, what we've done is we've developed a, a very strange way to define the transpose of a matrix. A transpose of a matrix A would be such that in this inner product context, we've switched the roles of the u's and the v's. So on the left, the u is being pre-multiplied with the a. Whereas on the right, it's the v that's being pre-multiplied with the a transpose. So again, this is an unusual way to define a transpose. We can easily write down what the transpose is and define it in a much simpler way. But what we're going to do now is take by analogy this inner product expression for vectors and matrices and rewrite it for functions and differential operators. So we have a differential operator, our script L as usual. And we're going to define an adjoint operator. We'll call it L star. And that's going to be like the transpose. It's going to be the analogy to the transpose of a matrix, the adjoint of the original differential operator. And we're going to define it in precisely the same way. So we have the inner product of V with L operating on U on the left. And on the right, we have the inner product of U with L star operating on V. So as you can see, we've changed the roles of the U's and the V's. On the left, the u is being operated on by the differential operator, whereas on the right, it's the v. And remember, inner products of functions, those are just integrals over the corresponding domain, as we'll see. I'm going to illustrate this using a general second order linear ordinary differential equation with variable coefficients. So it's second order, so we have second order derivative, first order derivative, and zeroth order derivative variable coefficients, so a0 of x, a1 of x, and a2 of x are just general functions of x. Those are the coefficients. And then we have our weight function, 1 over w of x. So then we want to determine the adjoint operator, L star, for this given L. So I'll show you the process on how to do that for this particular operator. This particular operator is of interest to us in general. And in fact, all of the previous examples that we've done fit within this operator. So this will be a very general result, but it's also going to show us the technique for getting the adjoint for a differential operator. So we go back to this expression here, inner product of v with l u is equal to the inner product of u with l star v. So let's take the left-hand side, inner product of v with l u. So the inner product of two functions is the integral of the product v of x and l operating on u and it's being done with respect to the weight function w of x. Now you see those two weight functions cancel. So we have for the first term v times a0 times u double prime. That's what you see here. Second term is v times a1 times u prime here. 
v times a2 times u, and that's what you see here. So this is our inner product of v with lu. Now what we would like to do is to switch the roles of the u and the v. Here, the u is embedded inside the differential operator, and here the v is outside. So we want to switch it so that the v is being operated on by the differential operator, and the u is out front, and that will then expose, or that will give us, the L star, the adjoint of the original differential operator. Now the way we do that is integration by parts. I have a separate video on integration by parts, but the basic idea of integration by parts is it allows us to move derivatives off of one part of an integrand onto another part of that integrand, and that's exactly what we want to do here. I want to move derivatives off of the u and onto the v, off of the u, and on to the V. So that will switch their roles within this inner product. Now you'll notice this last term, A0 times V times U, there's no derivatives, so that term is fine. So let's take a look first at this second term, A1 times V times U prime. So here's our general integration by parts formula. So integral of P dQ is equal to P times Q minus the integral of Q dP. So you can see it's moved the derivative off of the Q and on to the p. So the dq is the portion of the integral that we want to move the derivative off of, and the p is the rest of the integrand, so in this case a1 times v. So you integrate dq to get q, differentiate p to get dp, then again you have the p times q, that's evaluated at the endpoints, minus, don't forget the minus sign, times this integral of q dp, q is u, times dp. So we have moved the derivative off of the u and on to the v. Now the first term, there's two derivatives on the u, so we're going to have to do integration by parts twice. So in the first integration by parts, u double prime d dx, that is the dq, so we can get one of the derivatives off of that, and then the p is the rest of that integrand, and then we get this expression here. Again, the p times q evaluated at the endpoints, minus the integral of q dp. So we've moved one derivative off the u onto the v. We do integration by parts again, that's what's down here, and then we get another term evaluated at the endpoints, and then minus, again, so minus minus plus, the integral of q dp. So here, the u prime dx, that's what we want to get the derivative off of, and then the rest of the integrand is the derivative of a zero v, and then that allows us to get both derivatives off of the u and now onto the v. So if you put that all together, the inner product of v with l u is all of this evaluated at the endpoints at a and b, plus the integral of the weight function times u of x times this thing in squiggly brackets, which is now 1 over w. You'll notice I put the w in here, and here they cancel. This will allow us to extract out the adjoint operator for L, which is the L star. So let's think about this first term, which is evaluated at the endpoints. So you'll notice in every one of these terms, I have a U and or a V. If we have homogeneous boundary conditions, then all of these terms vanish at the endpoints. And that just leaves us with this integral. That integral is the inner product of U with L star V with respect to our weight function W. So then this expression in squiggly brackets, that's L star operating on V, the differential operator in that, that differential operator then, that is our adjoint of the original differential operator L. So that's what we have here, the 1 over W times this. Now if you look carefully, you'll notice what happened. The variable coefficients have moved inside the derivatives and the odd order derivatives have changed sign. Now think about why that is. So every time we do an integration by parts, it changes the sign of that integral term. So you do one integration by parts, change the sign, becomes a negative. You do two integration by parts, change the sign twice, and goes back to being positive. And that holds for higher order derivatives as well. So this is a general result for a second order linear variable coefficient differential operator L. This is the adjoint operator. Let's take a look at an example. So let's say our differential operator is d squared dx squared plus x times d dx. So that is L. Now because this is a second order linear variable coefficient ordinary differential operator already, 
we know what the general form of the adjoint is. So I don't have to go through, do all the integration of my parts again. Uh, we can use the general result that we just obtained. The coefficient of the second derivative, that's a0, so that's 1. The coefficient of the first derivative, that's a1, so x. And then the coefficient of the zeroth derivative is 0. The weight coefficient here is 1. If you're not sure what it is or it's not clear from the problem, then just assume that it's 1. So here's the general form of the adjoint operator operating on v. It's the second root of a0 times v minus the first root of a1 times v plus a2 times v. Well, a0, that's 1. a1, that's x. And a2, that's 0. So this term is just v double prime minus the derivative of x times v. If we use the product rule on this term, then we have v double prime minus x times v prime minus v. So that's L star, the adjoint operator, operating on v. Extract out the differential operator, that's L star. It's d squared dx squared minus x d dx minus 1. You'll notice it's of the same form as the original operator, so it's second order, linear, variable coefficient. In this case, however, it's not the same. It's very similar, but it's not the same. We have a minus sign here and a minus 1 here that did not exist in the original operator. So in the next video, we're going to talk about what that means, L and L star being the same, and we'll answer this question that we raised at the beginning of this video, which is, what is the requirement for a differential operator to have mutually orthogonal eigenfunctions? So I'll see you in the next video to answer that question.